Okay, welcome to tutorial 4 for Stencil. Today we're going to get into a little bit more content. In essence, what we're going to be doing is actually looking at doing some of the programming within Stencil. Uh, this tutorial will probably last over three or four sessions, so I'm aiming at uh, making these at about 10 minutes each, so they're in bite sized chunks and you can sort of work out what you're doing and this one's fairly involved because we're going to actually utilize um, how you program in stencil in essence so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new game so we're here I've got 21 games in here but we'll create a new one anyway so we come up here click on create a new game um, I'm going to use the crash course kit as a basis for this although I'm going to alter that and essentially I want to use Mambo um, so we'll select that and move on to the next version and I'm going to call it obviously tutorial 4 coding <coughs> and we'll create that okay this should bring us up the dashboard now in here we've got a couple of actor types one thing I'm not going to use is prongers so oh no we'll leave him there for the time being I may use him yet so, what we're going to do is start with creating a scene. Okay, so we're going to create the new scene, leave it as the standard, 20 width tiles, so 20 tiles, they're all 32 pixels each, so 32 by 32, and they're 12 pixels high, uh, 12 tiles high. So that gives you an idea of the, um, the width we're looking at. So we're looking at 640 by 240 essentially. Now we're going to name this whatever we want to name it. I'll call it the main screen because we're not going to have multiple versions of this and just because I like things being pretty we'll have it uh, with a nice variation in colour and we'll create. So that brings us up our main screen. Now the tile sets here that's part of that basis I'm actually not going to use any tiles and we'll see what we do later on. However um, oh, I called it the min screen. That's okay. Um, that's all I want to do at the moment, but just get an idea that we've got that min screen there. It looks like that. It's 640 wide that way and should be 240 this way. Although I'm probably wrong about that now that I'm thinking about it. But <clears throat> it has uh, space, as we discussed in the previous tutorial that we need to work with. Now the first thing that I'm going to do, Mambo is going to be our main character. Now Mambo, I am going to create him and I want to constrain him so he only appears on screen. So let's bring up Mambo, our superhero of the day. And we're going to constrain him so we've got all the animations and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is come to this event screen. Now, uh, in the next tutorial, and I'm not talking about the next portion of this, but the tutorial after, we'll discuss why it's not a great idea to have massive amounts of code in this, but this is the screen that we're going to use today just to do our coding in. We're not going to deal with behaviours or anything like that. So, what we're going to start with is when you code something for your character, it has to be based on some kind of event. So over on this side of the screen we have certain events. Okay, this side of the screen we have stuff that we code with. So to start with, before we can actually add any code, so you can't, can't drag anything across into this space at the moment because we don't have an event. So I need to add an event. Okay, um, And we've got some basics here, so we've got when creating, when drawing, when updating. Uh, we've got some inputs. Okay, If we click, if it's on the actor, if it's on a region, keyboard. Um, timing, actors, collisions, sound, we'll go through some of these sorts of things. Uh, the basics is, the first thing that I'm going to do is make the ship, uh, make the uh, Mambo able to move. So essentially when updating. So updating is used when something changes, okay, uh, and they update the game is essentially what it is. And it comes up with this version here that says always. So what we need to do is we need to go to, we're going to have some user input. So we need actually a bit of a flow first. So we need to say if. 
if something, because what I need to do first is say, if the right button's down, if the left button's down, do this, do this, do this. So we're going to have <coughs> an if statement. Now an if statement is something that allows you a selection or a choice. It controls the flow of the game. So what we're going to do is go user input, if control is down. Okay, so if we're going to choose the control and we'll start with the right button. So if right is down. Okay, we need to determine the X speed of um, of our character of Mambo. Okay, so if we're not certain where something is, okay, but this will probably be under actor, I imagine. Okay, so your actor has an X speed and a Y speed. X speed moves him left and right, as we discussed in the previous one. The Y speed moves him uh, up and down. If you're not sure where something is, you can put some code, uh, some words that you know are going to be in the actual code segment up in this search field, and it'll find it for you. Now, I'm thinking that if we just go to the actor here, yeah. Um, so motion set x speed two. Now what I want to do here is create uh, the ability to customize okay the, the speed that the ship moves at. So what we need is an attribute. okay so we come down to our attributes and we want to create an attribute. An attribute needs to be a number because x speed is is essentially a numerical format. So we're going to call this uh, hero speed. Okay, um, and we'll how fast our hero can move. Okay, it's a number. It's not hidden. We don't want it to be hidden. We want it, if we click here that it's hidden, then we need to set it and it won't be able to be changed. But if we leave it as unhidden, we can change it. And I'll show you how that's done later on when we test the game. So how fast our hero can move. Our hero speed here. We go to our attributes page now. Okay. And we can have a look down here. And we've got a default value. Now I'm going to set that default value to 20. Okay. So we come back to the palette. So, set x speed to whatever we've set our hero speed to, for self. So that's all good. That's, if the right button's near, down now, um, then Membo would move right across the screen. Okay, so if I added our Membo, okay, put him down to the bottom, um, what we also want to do with Mambo is we want to, because I'm not going to put any ground down or anything like that, uh, he's not going to be affected by gravity. Okay, so that way he can't fall through the ground, which would uh, really mess up his day. So we'll save that, the main screen, and if we come up here and we test the scene, If I hit the right key, he starts to move. If I hit the left key, whoop, he doesn't. Okay, you also notice when I took my finger off the right key, he continued to move. Now, so we need to deal with that as well. Okay, so to finish this section, uh, we need to do some stuff. So we'll go back to where we're coding. Um, we need to now make it if the left button is down. So we need to go otherwise if. Okay, so if right is down, Otherwise, if uh, we need the left is down, so grab this, bring it in. If we choose the control, left is down. More we'll copy, you can see you can right click and copy. Um, but in this case, what we need to do is we need to. Uh, have the negative hero speed because remember if we're moving left we're moving in the uh, negative X space as described in the previous tutorial so what we need to do is we need a math section in here that is going to give us the negative version but 
I can't see. Oh, there it is. Negate. Okay. So set the X speed to negate hero speed. So in, this, in essence, what that means is negative hero speed. Uh, and that means we would move back towards the left to make sure that it's working. Okay. Uh, we save him. We'll test the game. And there's the right, and I hit the left, and you can see we can move him backwards and forwards, but he doesn't stop. So we need to finally stop him from continuing to move when um, that's happening. So we need further otherwise if. So essentially how these work is it tests once th things get updated. If right is down, do this. If left, and then if right isn't down, it moves on to the next otherwise. Otherwise, if left is down, do this. If that's not the case, then it'll come to this otherwise if. And we go, uh, in here we need to do some comparison. So, we need a couple of different things. We need to make sure that the right isn't down. So, we need another Boolean comparison. So, if... Oh, if not, and we need the user input. Okay, choose control. Okay, so if not right is down, so that's saying if you haven't got the right down, and we need another not down here. Obviously, you can see where I'm going with this, hopefully. If not, left is down. Okay, so if not right is down and not right, left is down, we're all good. Uh, so what we need to do now is we need to set the X speed to zero. Okay, so what we want to do if it's not right and it's not left, we want to set that X speed to zero. Just for safety's sake and for completeness, we also set the Y speed. Okay, so the Y speed's up and down. I mean, it shouldn't have any effect, but it's nice to be complete about these sorts of things. So, once we do that, we'll test the game. Okay, moving right, finger off. Moving left, finger off. You can see that now we've actually stopped him from continuing to move. However, there's one thing that we haven't stopped him doing, and that's what we'll handle in the next part of the tutorial, and that is disappearing off the edge of the screen. So I'll talk to you in the next part of this tutorial about how we're going to contain him on the screen. Thanks for listening.